so home game Now some people are added. Sir, Sarthar Muttal present. Very good, sir. Khan. Okay, so this is Kunal. Okay, guys, this is about a PC. So first of all, we'll discuss about a PC hardware components. Okay, then uh, about a, your CPU one by one. So mainly out of the, the PC hardware components, first CPU and RAM and ROM. And uh, what is RAM and about a ROM, BIOS, BIOS settings, CMOS battery, motherboard, and uh, SMPS and storage in the storage mainly hard disk, SSDs, okay, hard disk, SSD, then uh, MBR, GPT, file systems, okay, and boot processing and troubleshooting. When you are getting a ball like a end startup system, what are the issues? Troubleshooting of a boot processing. Okay, so while boot, boot team, some issues will occur. So that that are troubleshooting kind of stuff. This is the part in the your PC hardware part. Okay, guys, this is a a, a traditional picture. So here it is a CPU and there is a memory. So whenever you give input like instructions and data, CPU process it. If it is required, it is stored in a memory. If anything required from memory, it will take it from memory where it is processed. Okay, once it is process completed, it will put it on an output devices. Standard input devices keyboard and standard output devices are monitored. But that is just a traditional one. But uh, here it is. We have a different PCPU, different components. We are uh, discussing first. So that is a traditional block diagram can be changes later. Okay. So that we again I will you. Before I go to the next guys, this is a cabinet. In this cabinet, inside of this cabinet. Okay. Okay, okay, just what I will do. We'll change little process here. What is this message from our side or other side? Or pit. Okay, very good. So First of all, uh, there is a diagram is there, no? so I will try to put that diagram. So why we should we skip that one? This is for CPU in middle. I'm giving input and I will get an output. And this is for a memory.
Okay, I'm giving input. So it is. And a CPU process it, put it on a output. So if CPU required data means for processing, it may store in memory or it will take it from the memory. So this is our block diagram. The standard computer, the block diagram, a traditional black diagram kind of stuff it is. Okay. Generally, because of this block diagram, or I don't know, because of some people speaking, people think this is a CPU, guys. That is not a CPU, that is our cabinet. It is nothing but a cabinet. Inside this cabinet, we have a several components are there. Inside this cabinet, you have a several components. Okay, so it is not CPU guys, it is a cabinet. Inside a cabinet, inside of cabinet, These particular devices are there, like a CPU, RAM, motherboard, ROM, of course, on motherboard, okay, hard disk or SSDs, CD, DVDs, SMPS. These are the components inside of your cabinet. Of course, olden days we have a floppy disk. That kind of stuff is not available now. So we can connect uh, several uh, things out of this cabinet. Okay, out of this cabinet, we can connect several things are there, which we can able to see directly, like a keyboard. Okay, so like a keyboard, so connect, you are connecting keyboard, mouse is a pointer device, of course, monitors, it is a display device or output devices, printers, scanners, what is a printer? Printer converts your soft copy to hard copy, scanner converts hard copy to soft copy. What is a soft copy, guys? I have a document, so you see. This is a document which is in my computer that is a soft copy. So I have a drawing here, okay? I have a picture here, or are soft copies only. If I take it print out on the paper, that is a hard copy. Okay, scanner, you have a document, like you are having a certificate, college certificate is there, hard copy. You scan it and store in your PC, that is become soft copy, okay? Documents, pictures, whatever it is inside a computer, inside a computer or a pen drive or a hard disk, that is a soft copy. You take it out like a printout, that is a hard copy. Okay. Touchpads, generally laptops having touchpads for giving a, a pointing device like that. So touch screens. Okay. So for example, my laptop is a touch screen laptop. Okay. Touch screens, tablets, two in one laptops, these are all having a touch screens, right? So mobile phones, touch screens. Mics, speakers, I'm speaking and also I can able to listen, right? From mic and speakers. I speak to mic, mic is input, speaker is output. Card readers, okay? So 
if you have a memory card then you want to read in your system you have to connect through the card readers bluetooth devices nowadays we are connecting bluetooth headphones kind of stuff bluetooth devices you can connect it bluetooth keyboard i'm using bluetooth mouse external hard disk to store any heavy data mass data you want to store outside of your pc then you can use external hard disk joysticks kind of stuff is like a gaming pads pc gaming purpose okay these are the basic components of your pc so this is also a cabinet empty cabinet okay next one is cpu guys cpu means central processing unit so from here one by one components we will see so what is what cpu or processor cpu or a processor so cpu is a brain of your computer semiconductor device cpu means central processing unit it's a simple chip it perform arithmetic and logical processing if you see these pictures see cpu is a simple chip only not a cabinet guys it's a simple single chip only these people already started music Okay, is inserting CPU to the motherboard. Okay, so like that you can see different CPU kind of stuff from here. Okay, this is our CPU. So CPU has a certain properties. Okay, so when you want to buy a CPU, uh, first of all. different manufacturers of cpu i given only four names guys but out of this very important one is for a laptops or a desktops okay for laptops or a desktops intel and amd these two are a important one so for laptops and desktop mobile phones other devices having a different processor for example qualcomm processor is there okay Qualcomm processor is there, like that. Okay, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon, Exynos, MediaTek, mobile phone related processors. So each processor has certain specification. When you want to buy a processor for your purpose, so you must know this. specifications you must know this specifications okay speed of a processor width width means which bit 32 bit or 64 bit type okay so speed of a processor fsb fsb is mainly for uh, your uh, ram it will tell your ram model and uh, speed okay this fsb will tell you what type of ram you should use it what is the ram speed also there okay and cache memory the cache memory the two l3 cache memory number of cores in the processor number of threads are a logical processors is a virtualization technology is built in is there or not like that certain features are there guys for example 
you want to buy a process like I'm going to Amazon to buy a one CPU. So I want to buy i5 CPU for my desktop. Just I want a CPU, not a, uh, this cabinets. Okay. Maybe I will uh, change the search. So it is a processor. It is a i5-2500 means second generation quad core processor. It is. So 12th generation processor. 12th generation processor, 13th generation processor. And not only a generation guys, can you see their uh, names 12400F. F means automatically we can understand F means there is no built-in graphical memory. There is no built-in graphical memory. See, it is 13 K, 13 generation K model. It is, and this is a non-specific model. But I will go to both the things. I'll show you. See, Intel F model, 12th generation desktop. So, number of processors are six. Cache memory is. 18 MB cache memory. It support uh, okay, DDR4 or DDR5 and the socket type is 1700. Because of F model, cost will be reduced. Okay. So this is the model, right? So what I'm trying to do is I will select this one, search in Google and go to arc.intel.com. Okay, so here it is. This is the processor model 4.4 gigahertz, 18 MB cache memory. Okay, and number of core 6, total threads are 12, and 18 MB cache memory. This is the power requirement. Turbo power is this requirement. It supports up to 1.8 GB RAM. And what type of RAM you have to take it? Either this type or this type. Depends upon your motherboard. You'll take DDR4 3200 or DDR5 4800. Megahertz processor, I have to take it. It's about dual channel. So, what type of socket? LGA 1700. This type of socket support motherboard is required. So, for example, I'm going to this. So this is the LGA 1700 supporting motherboard. Uh, this also comes under lesser cost. You can see 7650. This is very heavy cost. What is the difference? So the built-in features. This is having HDMI 2.5 gigahertz LAN connectivity. Three. M.2 slots are there. Okay. Okay. So this is the one model pro, uh, uh, kind of stuff. See, this is the processor socket, RAM slots. And you can see this is the one uh, SSD slot, another SSD slot. One more SSD slot can be somewhere. I can't see. Okay. These are SATA sockets. Back panel connectivity. So it depends upon what are the internal kind of stuff. You may get a, a built-in Bluetooth kind of stuff. Some are like that. Built in Wi Fi kind of stuff. It is there. So, 13th generation I uh, Fi processor. Okay. It contains uh, 20 MB cache memory. Okay. 10 core 16 threads. 10 core processor 16 threads. 4.6 gigahertz clock speed. And LGA 1700 socket. 
graphic card not mandatory means built in graphics are there built in graphical memory is there this f model does not having a any graphical memory as you know so but we will confirm from here okay and another one it is 64 bit processor and virtualization technology is yes it is there okay so what are the processes guys if you check it you will understand what what are the things okay. so you want to know what is the built in graphical memory you have to search for a display related information or it will write here so it required a graphic card otherwise i will search this one it not showing which model it is it is also not showing which model it is the details are correct f model like that it is not showing 20 mb cache memory 4.6 gigahertz processing speed it is okay so 10 cores 16 threads totally and different frequencies it is showing 20 mb cache memory this is the power requirement 128 gb support ddr5 type is this support ddr4 is this kind of support it is yeah it is showing processor graphics uhd graphics 730 this one not showing that details right After this one only, it should be there. It is not showing the details of your graphical memory, so it is not showing graphical details. So that is required. So this is not required a graphic card specially. If you want, you can add it. How much resolution support? You can see get it from here. And the socket, motherboard socket type, it is same like this. It is a 64 bit. Of course, it is a supporting. intel virtualization technology guys every processor every motherboard having certain specifications so you have to follow that specifications okay 30 day wait or 64 bit how much frequency what is ram model also will get it from the so based on that only what to choose okay your cache memory number of cores number of threads like that even for existing system so you can go to task manager performance cpu what is my processor i5 3230m even if you type that one i5 3230m model what is about my processor of course i know some information from here what is it 2.6 gigahertz 2 core 4 threads virtualization technology is enabled L3 cache memory. M means mostly it is a moderated kind of stuff. Okay, U H M H means high performance, but it will consume lot of power. Um, U means low performance. It consumes very low power. You can see 3 MB cache memory, 2.6 gigahertz total power. power it is the okay, two core four thread processor 3 mb cache memory it support up to 32 gb the ram model the ram model it is can you see ddr3 And either you should take 13, 33, or 1600 megahertz RAM. Okay, and Intel HD graphics 4000. It is saying this type of memory, uh, graphical memory in saying. This is a type of uh, socket uh, because it's a laptop, right? So M indicates either it is a medium or a A mobile model for a, for a certain mobile models means laptops you will get an M models. Okay, Intel virtualization is available. Guys, 
you must know what is your CPU specifications about your CPU. OK, this is some more details. Just before we discuss, so we'll be told a processor 32 bit or a 64 bit. So why, what is the advantage or disadvantage of using 32 bit or a 64 bit? So what is 32 bit or a 64 bit? The instruction set, the instruction set in instruction set array and data is sizes 32 bit in 32 bit PC, 32 bit PC, 64 in a 64 bit processor. Okay, what is 64 bit processor means? The instruction set array data and data is a 64 bit size. In 32 bit, with 32 bit size. You are using a 64 bit processor if you are using a so for example your cpu is 64 bit so 32 bit your operating system must be 32 bit your device drivers must be 32 bit your applications Okay. Yeah, this icon is not required. You should uh, space is not required. That is what I am trying to write here. Same, same goes with uh, your CPU is 64 bit. Operating system must be 64 and the device drivers. 64 bit and applications 64 bit. But there's some options depends upon OS. Okay, so you want to run. Okay, you want to run 32 bit application with the wow 64. You can run 32 bit application also. Okay, in this one, you want to run 16 bit application. You can use wow 32. Using that, you can run a 32 bit application also. This is separate. Okay, so this is compulsory. This is separate. Applications, you can get a doubt, sir. I download a 32 bit application. I am running in a 64 bit machine. It is running better. How it is? Windows 8, Windows 10 having built-in WoW feature. Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and of course Windows 10 having built-in WoW feature. So that is WoW 64 feature. Okay. So what is WoW 64? Windows 32 on Windows 64. Only one step lower guys. Not uh, 16 bit can I run in 64? It won't work. So this is the point uh, you should understand operating system. System type is 32 bit, 64 bit. So then on processor, 32 bit drivers, operating system, and your applications must maintain this category. Okay. But if you are using 64 bit processor, what are the features? The instruction size and data size is higher. It means you can give complex instructions. Complex, much complex instructions. 
for example i have a 4 bit processor or 8 bit processor is there 8 bit processor is there what i can able to do adding subtracting multiplications so only limited functions limited instructions i can able to give 16 bit i can give much better 32 bit processor much complex instructions i can give okay so you know you want to do process like if there is a instruction size increasing means the, the complexity in instruction is having bigger the size so so that's you can run complex instructions as compared to 32 bit big size data so enter one single big size data we can able to easily process but point is because of your instruction size increases and data size increases compulsory we need a more ram capacity okay required more ram and a disk space so here it is if you know small point guys windows 10 want to install windows 10 operating system in 32 bit processor on 32 bit processor okay so 32 bit uh, windows 10 you are installing the ram minimum requirement is 1 gb and uh, disk space free space is 16 gb free space is required if in case you have a 64 bit machine you want to install windows 10 64 on it minimum 2 gb ram and 20 gb free disk space is required so guys bit size increases of course there is certain features but still we need a more ram capacity so of course infrastructure size also increases multi core processing support is there earlier 32 bit time so it is a single core processor or dual core processor but now we are getting multi core processing sing and quad core quad core processors octa core processor deca core processors we are getting nowadays because of this multi core processing possibilities there and uh, 64 bit and the recent 64 bits also supporting uef5 it is a nothing but a new version of your bios and it will provide a secure boot the uef5 provide a secure boot. digital drivers uh, okay sorry device drivers digital signature enforcement virtualization technology is available what is the use of this virtualization technology guys i have a windows 10 operating system in my physical machine windows 10 home edition you know when earlier i took a classes for cts cognizant okay so cognizant batches when i am taking so i have to show practicals on a windows 10 enterprise windows server 2016 and 2019 and linux okay like that so and uh, vmware vspare uh, uh, one machine is there like there is a different uh, uh, device operating systems we have to i have to work okay even i want to learn devops i want to install devops applications uh, sometimes it is on windows sometimes we can only we can install in a linux only like a ansible take an ansible example ansible you can install in only linux based systems only okay so to get a windows 10 enterprise system or windows server system or linux system what i have to do i have to go and buy a new computer so how how many computers i have to carry so what have we done i create a virtual machines in my physical machine i install the operating system in that virtual machine and then i use a virtual machines how to create a virtual machine it is depends upon you okay if you are system having a hyper v feature built in hyper v feature you can use it or you can use virtual box you can use virtual box it is virtual box it's a free tool so you can use a virtual box and create a virtual machines and install a required operating system install applications and do work another one is a vmware workstation this is vmware workstation no not that one. in this vmware workstation also i have a several Uh, operating system installed, including 
the older one windows xp 2003 2012 2007 2008 2000 windows 10 windows 2016 like this these are all my virtual machines this is my server and this is the client okay and uh, of course i installed uh, this linux operating system in my virtual box okay so there is a lot of facilities are there this is just to show okay. how it is possible so because of mine is 64 bit and i have a virtualization technology in the cpu okay what is a guest OS? Guest OS means OS in the virtual machine. I created a virtual machine. I installed a Linux operating system in it. And that is a guest OS. In my physical machine, I have a Windows 10 Home Edition. That is a my host OS. Okay, guys, these are the 64 bit and 32 bit and 64 bit some features. Guys, uh, is understanding or uh, completely dark? Yes, sir, understanding. Understanding is good. This is about a heat sink. Okay, this is a small point. It is about a air heat sink, guys. So it is a look very big. A heat sink is a piece of metal that sits on your computer chip, such as a CP, such as a CPU and draws power away from the components by letting it rise through the series of fins or fans, something like this. Fins are fins is correct. By themselves, uh, heat sinks are passive, meaning there are uh, have no moving parts. Actually, the this is one of the heat sink assembly. You can put it in a Google, so you can see the new heat sink type. Okay guys, if you look at close, it is under this one, there is a processor. Processor will get heat. Processor will get a heat. So when processor is getting heated, so what will happen? Um, it will be damaged. If it is get a processor getting a war heated, processor will get damaged. Processor is very costly, right? Just now only I showed. So 25,000, 50,000, 60,000, very costly processors are there. These processors, what will happen, whether it is cheaper or cost, uh, important is the processor will get heat. The, if it is getting overheated, processor will damage. So what we are doing, we put a heat sink on it. We put a heat sink on it. What this heat sink will do, it absorb the heat. It absorb the heat from your processor. And uh, outer, you can see there is a fan. The fan blows the air. So what happened? The heat sink will get a cool like that this heat sink and heat sink fan will keep the temperature of a processor in a regular stage means not get overheated or not completely cooling off because it never cools it's getting heated while it is working okay that is a one thing and there is a one more is there that is called a heat sink paste This is also called as thermal compound. Okay, thermal paste or a thermal compound. This is heat sink paste, guys. This heat sink paste available in uh, this small dabba box at like a this injection type. Some are very costly, some are less costly, but whatever it is, it works fine. Okay, so you have to apply heat sink paste on the processor that apply heat sink paste on the processor
okay on the processor on the that one on that one we have to put a heat sink and the fan assembly what is the advantage of that one so this heat sink paste give more contact to your process uh, heat sink uh, paste will give more contact between processor and the heat sink so it can easily absorb the heat from your heat sink not only a normal processor guys also for laptops if you take a laptop heat sink i have a good pictures uh, like this this is also good so this is a unit which is on your processor so this is goes on the processor and this will absorb the heat the heat is transferred to this and the fan will blow out the heat see so this is color one okay this is the colored one means it is also same but it is coated black that's it okay the heat is will be blow off by here Here, this fan. Okay, that's why, guys, when you are using a laptop, very importantly, do not okay. So, this is observe the heat this is the processor area the processor uh, heat is absorbed by this one of course there is a heat sink in between the heat is transferred here and the fan blow the heat out so you know when you are using a laptop guys do not put your laptops on the bed on the bed on laps on laps also if you put on a lap of course you can use your laptop by putting on a your laptop that's why it is called as a laptop desktop means you can put uh, your system on the desk that's why it is desktop laptop games because much easier you can put it on your lap that is very dangerous guys because laptop produce lot of heat that is not good for you and laptop also if you die no problem but laptop will die okay so because of your clothes and your skin contacts clo close the breathers laptop having a several holes the holes we call it as a vents or a breathers vent uh, you know some people they are using so much of technology now okay so so much of wisdom or technology we don't know what it is exactly okay people are more scientists than normal people okay so many people are uh, vastu uh, experts without having know what is a vastu means okay <laughs> so people are you know they don't put a ventilation even there is no ac even for a bathroom also there is no ventilation okay that will create very dangerous right same way guys for laptop or a desktop do not close the ventilations means like a vents or the breathers the holes we call it as a breathers like you have you are breathing through your nostrils same it is it will breathe through this also breathing means exactly the heat is want to escape from your system it need a way to go outside okay outside temperature with that one it will be get cool down. okay so that's why don't put your laptops on laps or clothes or any leather surfaces put your laptop on clean plain surfaces would be better or table mates plastic one table mates that is also good give the gaps surrounding to your laptop okay don't put your pens pencils erasers surrounding to your laptop if you put it the heat vents cannot have heat cannot able to escape that is the point okay here one troubleshooting thing guys your system is restarting itself your system is restarting itself 
again and again, again and again, without showing any error on your screen. You are working, of you start your PC, you are working, or maybe you start your PC, PC is started and restarted, started, restarted, or you are, you are working, like PC is started, after five minutes you, while you are working, seriously you are running some program or an application, big application, it restarted again without showing any errors. There is a possibility, a lot of issues are there, but one of the possibility is heatsink is get overheated. Heatsink is get a overheated. What to do if it is getting overheated? Okay, first one. Check heatsink is properly sit on the processor. Heatsink fan is running or not? Heatsink fan is running or not? Heatsink is properly set on a set on a processor. Heatsink paste is there or not? If possible, check the heatsink paste is there or you got cleaned. And very important guys, dust. Dust is very dangerous for your both laptop and desktops because the dust particles easily attracts inside your computer because it's a positive negative charges continuously changes so it will attract a lot of dust you know uh, when we got, when i brought back my computer from bangalore to vishakapatnam that time so 10 years back story it is <laughs> so what happened it is keep re restarting so we got it out we went to the shop which is 10 rupees heatsink paste i apply the heatsink paste and insert back that heatsink again issue is resolved Another issue I told that is uh, I'm telling uh, one guy is seriously working. So it is our lab. So what happened? The system is near to the window. OK, the window is uh, people are always open the window and leave it. So a lot of dust came and uh, sit on a system, mainly this heat sink. Completely dust. OK, so heat sink is not disconnected, not remote, right? So it is it's on. But what happened? It is because of dust. Heat is unable to escape. So while he's working, he started a laptop, he started a star. Working five minutes, 10 minutes. He running the virtual machines. System is restarted. He faced that issue multiple times. Then what I said, like, a, I got a doubt. I open the cabinet, lot of dust inside. I clean up the dust and mainly the CPU heat sink. I clean up completely and I removed uh, all the dust inside. Then uh, we connect it back and we start running. It is running good. So you see guys, we thought it is a simply a dust. Dust may cause several kind of issues. OK, so this is a one of the CPU related troubleshooting. Frequently restarting a PC without showing any error means heatsink paste may be cleaned. Sometimes people clean the system, that time they will clean the heatsink paste. Our heatsink paste is dried out. Generally, it will come for five to ten years, like at least three to five years. Five years easily it will work. Okay, one time apply, five years it will easily work. If any disturbance occur, it may be damaged. OK, sometimes people use a blowers instead of using a simple blower. They use a sucking kind of stuff. Even I use the uh, sucking part uh, to clean up my uh, vacuum cleaner kind of stuff. I use it to clean the desktop, OK, the cabinet. What happened? The heat sink paste is also gone. So simply to say. This is about your processor. Any doubts or anything, please tell me. No, sir. No doubt. Very good. Next one, I will tell about a RAM. Then we'll take small break. Then we'll go to ROM and remaining things.
there is there is a two primary memories one is ram and rom hard disk pen drives ssds these are all a secondary storage devices including cd dvd <coughs> secondary storage devices what are the primary storage devices are ram and rom what is the difference between ram and rom here it is ram random access memory rom read only memory <coughs> rom read only memory ram stores data temporarily rom contains data permanently means you cannot change you cannot delete kind of stuff okay rom contains the data by building of a rom chip it is built in instructions and data inside it's a kind of permanent memory of course there are some variations we'll see that one. but ram temporary data ram considered under <coughs> volatile memory rom is a non volatile memory rom is a non volatile memory what is a volatile memory when power is off or power is disconnected automatically data will be lost in the device data will be lost in the device when power is off okay whenever you disconnect the power what is non volatile memory even if power is off data is still available okay non volatile memory examples of course rom is one of the example but hard disk ssds pen drives sd cards okay these are all non volatile memories only even the power is off the data is still can be remains inside ram is can be changeable you can add a ram you can disconnect a ram like that ram can be changeable you can add a ram you can change the ram kind of stuff okay but rom is a fixed chip on a motherboard rom is fixed chip on a motherboard Okay. First one is RAM. About a RAM, random access memory. It is also called as a main memory. Random access memory also called as a main memory. So RAM and ROM are primary memories. And uh, what is the main memory? RAM. It is a primary storage for a CPU. it is integrated circuit temporarily store programs instructions and data ram consider under volatile memory this is a kind of volatile memory type only so different rams are there static ram dynamic ram okay you have a static ram and dynamic ram what is static ram static ram is also called s ram okay static ram is also called as s ram this s ram is created so this s ram is pure form of transistor s rams are much faster than d rams dynamic rams s ram is a faster than but it is very costly and of course we are using sram which is built inside of your cpu as a cache memory srams are built inside of cpus okay which is act like a cache memory next one is dynamic ram dynamic rams also called as drams there is a several drams are okay What is the DRAM? Is SD RAM, synchronous dynamic RAM, synchronous dynamic RAM. 
So this synchronous dynamic RAM further developed into DDR double data rate, double data rate synchronous dynamic RAM. Okay, so DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, DDR5 are the different versions from DDR. DDR5 is also released into the market, so which is support uh, uh, your 12th generation uh, i3, i5, i7 processors. Okay. So when you are buying a RAM or when you are using a RAM, there is a RAM specifications on screen. RAMs, each and every RAM, RAM having a, a certain things. The first one is RAM sizes are important, right? So you want to run your system smoother, you should have a better RAM capacity. Okay, so RAM size is always we tell in a earlier days MBs and GBs, now it is still MB, GBs only. Okay, mm, speed is the speed of a RAM already I told FSB of a CPU and speed of a RAM or RAM model should be suitable. Okay, speed of the RAM. Okay, different speeds of the RAM also there. Different models of RAM that is compulsory. Guys, remember one model cannot be fit with the other model. For example, my laptop is DDR3 model. If you, are, you want to try DDR4 to insert into my uh, laptop, it cannot be fit. Okay, so compulsory you have to follow the model rule also. Next one is your different voltage levels of RAM is there. So compulsory you should know, so to compatible or not. Now you want to upgrade or replace the RAM. You want to upgrade or replace the RAM. Okay, you want to upgrade or replace the RAM so you can insert your RAM into the RAM slots. You can insert your RAM into the RAM slots. Sure. Uh, RAMs you can easily fit inside. So now you have a one RAM. Now you want to increase your RAM capacity. You want to increase your RAM capacity. So what you will do? First of all, check your CPU specifications and motherboard compatibilities. Based on that, you have to choose your RAM, RAM size, RAM slot type or RAM model only. Okay, CPU. Based on CPUs, you will know RAM, how much RAM size you can use it, what type of memory type or speed of a RAM will be set from CPU side. Based on motherboard, RAM slots, memory types are dependent and voltage levels also a dependent part. Okay, and uh, EI MM DIM dual inline memory module or a ring rambus inline memory module used for a desktop coding small outline. Dual inline memory module used for a laptops. Mini PCs. This is SRAM guys, SRAM is a cache memory which is built inside of your CPU.
Test, this is the diagram. Just I can able to draw the diagram. Just uh, we don't get a time much. OK. So here. This is a diagram. So CPU. CPU. Process it. Okay, so what will happen to this? We'll see. You have a input output devices. You have a input output devices are there. So these input output devices are connected to IO controller. IO controller can understand can understand what is your process, right? So it will recognize the devices by their IRQ numbers. IO memory addressing. So your IO controller understand what is the device it is. So it will take instructions and the data. It will give it to your RAM. RAM give it to cache. Cache give it to your processor. Processor process it and give it to cache. Cache load it to RAM. RAM load it to IO controller. I will controller will give it to your monitor. Okay, so this is the original diagram. What happens? Not directly, we can't give input to CPU guys. The input is will be taken by I will controller and it will send uh, your instructions or data or any information that load into RAM only. So RAM will load uh, information to CPU, CPU process it and give it to RAM, RAM give it to IO controller, IO controller. There's anyway one more point is there, guys. This is a North Bridge. North Bridge will take care of this communication. Communication between CPU and RAM. Communication between CPU and RAM will be going through this North Bridge only. What about a South Bridge? South will is taking care of communication between your RAM, your IO controller, and either keyboard, monitor, like this. Sorry, sorry, my mind is not working at all. So, what is the North Bridge? It, uh, it, uh, it controls the communication between CPU and RAM. What is South Bridge? South bridge is control the communication between RAM and other peripherals. Thanks. And other peripherals. Okay. So this is South bridge. So this is some part of your RAM. Then we got ROM also. <laughs> but BIOS will take a lot of time, guys. BIOS, BIOS settings, CMOS battery, these things will take time. So what I will do, take a break. Yes, you understand up to RAM. Yes, sir. Take a break. 435, come back by 435. 15 minutes, have a tea or coffee.